Uh, okay, so when we are dealing with uh, barcode scanners in FirePro, normally we're expecting that you use uh, a barcode scanner that is either a USB scanner, so it's plugged into your computer, or a uh, Bluetooth scanner that is connected to the computer. Uh, today, I am actually using a WASP. USB scanner. So this plugs just straight in. It's got a cable plugged straight into my computer. These things cost about $100 on Amazon. Um, they're not particularly complicated. Um, the nice thing about most of the barcode scanners you can buy commercially these days is that they will read a whole range of different barcode formats. Uh, FirePro's internal barcode stuff uh, and we do have a number of reports in the system that generate barcodes for you. Um, those use a uh, UTF um, UTF-20, I think, is the format on there. Uh, but it's a standard barcode format. Uh, so 99% of barcode scanners that you might get will, um, will read that automatically. Now, most of the time, what's going to happen is that you're going to have material that you've purchased that already comes with a barcode on it. Uh, and usually that barcode is the serial number for the particular piece of equipment. So in many cases, if you have in the inventory module set up a barcode or serial number uh, directly on the inventory item, then that will automatically be the same barcode that's on the item. Usually a barcode is going to have the, the matching number uh, that appears directly underneath it. Uh, so if you've put the barcode uh, serial number in any of the serial number fields uh, on an item in FirePro, you have pretty much already set up the system so that it will read uh, a barcode correctly from that item or read the, the, the serial number correctly. Some items these days we get will have multiple barcodes on them. Uh, packs are a particular issue there. Uh, but again, if you put in all the different serial numbers, the software will, will check for all of them when you are barcode scanning. Alternatively, if you purchase commercial barcodes, uh, the little barcode labels, you can buy those uh, put the barcode ID in one of the serial number fields on the inventory item. Uh, and again, uh, that will link the item to, to that serial number for the purpose of barcode scan. So the code serial number fields uh, are all in use. Now, when we're barcode scanning um, in the system, we're often also trying to identify firefighters with a barcode. That's either to log who's doing the inventory servicing or to identify who is showing up for attendance purposes. So when we look at an individual personnel record in the software, if we look at the employment, or sorry, the personal general tab, there's a field called electronic ID in here. The electronic ID field is the one that the barcode scanner is going to use to identify someone. So if you have existing identification cards in the department with a barcode on them, all you have to do is put that barcode number in the electronic ID field, and that barcode now is linked to that firefighter. Likewise, if you um, have a labels, you want to stick onto something to identify firefighters with, with barcodes, you can just put that label number in. Another option is that if you put the firefighter's ID number in the electronic ID field, you can actually print out barcoded ID cards. And those ID cards can even include a, a picture of the firefighter um, and a department logo. This, this particular setup doesn't have the firefighter pictures, uh, but we do have electronic IDs entered. So if I wanted to print electronic ID cards for all these members, I would just need to select uh, who I wanted to print that for. And in the printer option on the right-hand side, under uh, labels, we have a barcode ID badges option. So this is going to print uh, barcoded ID badges for each selected member. You might have to mess around with your um, uh, margin settings um, on the system a little bit, depending on exactly uh, how much space you want on. Uh, so these cards can be then cut out and laminated if you want to do something like that. Um, 
the idea is that it's going to give you a barcode that you can use. Now, I've also already printed out one of those barcodes, so we can see that I'm going to be using it with the scanner. Um, but those are uh, those are always an option if you just want to print something directly from the software and you don't have anything separate. Uh, so the other thing that we might potentially be doing is you do also have the option to print barcoded labels directly out of Fire Pro that you might put right on inventory items if you want to do something like that. Uh, in order to do that, the first thing you need to do is get a label package. Uh, and generally on the label package, there's going to be the label sizes and dimensions right on the cover of the package. Um, and to configure Fire Pro to use those, you'd go to the file menu under the report page setup, and there's an option here called label margins. So you would just put in the label configuration that you want to use on there. Um, you know, and once you've set that to the sizes that you want and the margin settings, you can then go in uh, and go ahead and in the inventory module, we can go to the printer option. And there is once again, an inventory labels option here. So this will print a barcoded uh, set of labels that will include information about the code for the item and the item serial number. Again, I have uh, set up some of those and pre-printed them. So we're gonna be using that with the barcode scanner uh, today, just so we can quickly um, scan through on the system. Uh, so these can be, if they're printed on labels, can be just attached directly to items. And because these are printed directly from the inventory item, they will automatically use whatever serial number is entered in there. So even if you're dealing with a piece of equipment that does not have a barcoded uh, item on it, you can go ahead and, and pull that out. Now, as far as, so as far as getting that all set up, um, once you've got some items that are barcoded, let's talk a little bit about the inventory servicing component. So when we are dealing with logging inventory servicing with the barcode, uh, the first step there normally is you can go to the file menu in the software uh, and select the option called toolbar setup. Toolbar setup lets me grab my attendance scanner and my inventory service scanner shortcuts and attach them to my toolbar. So I already have those uh, set up here. So we can see I have my inventory service scanning shortcut and my attendance scanning shortcut. You can also access these windows um, by going into the inventory mo in the individual modules. So we can go to inventory, go to the red toolbox, and select inventory service scanning. Uh, or we can go to something like the personnel module and select attendance scan. Those are uh, the manual ways to get into these different user interface elements uh, where we're going to be able to, to use the scanner automatically. Um, so that's going to allow us to, to access these tools. Now, in order to use the inventory servicing scanner specifically, we need to make sure that we have what we would call service uh, records set up for individual items. So if I look at a particular inventory item in Fire Pro, I have my service schedule and my service records. The barcode scanner is specifically designed to create service records for inventory items, tracking things like which personnel record did this servicing and what type of servicing was done. Now, one of the cool things about this, though, is that you can actually uh, integrate inventory checklists or servicing checklists right into this tool, and we will walk through how to do that. But if you want to set up service records for an individual type of inventory item, you just have to edit the subcategory, and we can see we've got service schedule and service types as available options here. So if I uh, click on my service types, I can see I've got a set of different types of servicing that I can log. Some of these servicing logs can be uh, attached to scheduled services, so logging this service will update the service schedule. And what you can also do is you can attach specific service types to what we call a checklist template. So the checklist template can be set up using the custom checklist module where we have a standard in-service checklist that we can attach to this type of servicing. So we're going to see how that pops up. Um, 
if you need a hand kind of walking through setting up the the checklist we keep, we'll, we'll deal with that sort of through some other training options uh, but assuming we have a checklist set up we can use this checklist template to link that checklist directly to this type of service so once I've got at least one service type set up for a class of inventory item um, and we have a checklist template attached to it, I can now start to use the tool to actually log service records. So normally what would happen here is that you'd be settling in to do some, say, post-incident uh, servicing or, or inventory servicing on an item. Uh, all we have to do there is click on the uh, inventory service scanning module to pop up the inventory service scanning user interface. So this assumes that you're going to have a barcode scanner plugged into your computer. But if you don't, you can also just enter personnel IDs, electronic IDs manually. Uh, in this case, I'm going to barcode scan it. So just use my barcode scanner and scan my ID card in this case. And it's going to identify who I have has is doing this inventory service. Like I said they can manually type their ID card in if they want. So then it's going to bring us into an item ID field where we're going to be looking for our particular class of item. Uh, I could use the magnifying glass and manually search for the inventory item that I want, because again, not mandatory that you use the, the barcode scanner, but it does work a little faster. If I am barcode scanning, I just fire away and it's automatically going to bring up the inventory item. So it's got the code for the item, the category and subcategory, and then it's going to show all the different service dates uh, that we might have for our particular piece of gear. So uh, if I am just doing a standard, say, after use service, I can just click on the after use service. And in this case, I set up a checklist. So we will do that. I'm going to do uh, something simpler, like an annual flow test. So if I if I am picking a service type that doesn't have a checklist associated, I can just click on it. If I want to, I can add some specific notes about the results uh, of the test. What I can also do if I need to is if something about the servicing has resulted in this item not being usable anymore, we've identified that it is uh, going out of service, I can click this retire item tick box and immediately retire this in, this in, this item directly. It'll, it'll retire the entire inventory item. But in most cases, we just want to be like, okay, uh, we did an annual flow test and I click on the finished service record and that's going to log the servicing that I did. It'll take you right back into the start of the barcode scanner screen and it pre-enters the previous person's ID number because we assume that the same person is going to be keeping working. So you can just press the enter key and it'll keep that person connected. So if I go back and I look at this particular inventory item now, uh, and if I want to be tricky, I can actually use my serial number search and scan the barcode on it. And we're going to pull up the item automatically. Um, but in this case, I can see now I have a service record uh, flagged. If I go to the right date uh, up at the top, I can see I've got an annual flow test run by me on this date and tracks that basic servicing information. Now for dealing with a more complicated item that has an actual servicing checklist associated with it, the starting process is still the same. Right? I go, I scan my person ID badge, I scan the particular inventory item, and if I select one of the service types that has a checklist, as soon as I click on that service type, it's going to pop the checklist for me automatically. So I can see all the different items. Um, I can go through this checklist, say, no, there was a problem here. Let's say display not working. Um, and in this case, the inventory checklist actually has the option to create a, an inventory defect right away. So if oh. I wanted to log this as a defect. You started eating your half of the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> there was a thing here and I ate one. Okay. Uh, sorry, had a little background noise there. Um, so this is going to go in and allow me to create a defect right off the bat. So if I hit create defect, it's going to let me create a 
uh, immediate defect notification, attaching it to defect directly to the inventory item that I'm working on, um, and keeping track of exactly who reported this information. Um, so I can quickly go in and um, and log that. Let's make sure I have a unique ID number. Uh, I can quickly go in and log that information. Um, but if the rest of it is fine, everything's okay, I can just save this inventory checklist. Uh, and then I can finish my service log. So now when I go back to that same inventory item that I was working on, again, I'll do a quick barcode scan to pull it up. Um, Uh, when I looked at a specific item, we'll do, oh, uh, you should probably search on the right field. There we go. Um, and so what I'll see now, first of all, is that I do have a service record um, with a new uh, in-service checklist uh, on that date with the name of the person. I have an attached defect, which shows me the problem that I logged on that checklist. And I have a checklist that's been added to the checklist history so that I can see a full history of all the checklists, who logged it, and what happened. So allows me to create all those different elements pretty much all at the same time through one straightforward, relatively quick user interface. Uh, so that system is designed to allow you to move fairly quickly, log a bunch of servicing for an individual item, um, and ideally minimize some of the paperwork elements involved in it. The other piece that we have right now for the barcode scanner integration is what we would call attendance scanning. So when I'm dealing with attendance scanning, I have several different ways that I can manage attendance scanning. But normally what happens is that departments will set this up so that there is a, a laptop with a barcode scanner from somewhere near the entrance to the fire hall in the truck bay or something like that. Um, if you keep this running like this, it means that as soon as someone comes into the fire department, they can just go ahead and scan their ID badge or enter their ID number and it will pop up a little attendance information screen for you. This allows the person to quickly say, okay, we're in for an incident. The, the specific user interface here can be customized quite a bit. This department has things set up so that they are picking the individual unit that someone is coming in on um, and potentially the position that they are, uh, are taking. But once that basic information has been entered, you save it and it will go right back to the, the barcode scanning window so a different person can scan. It. So you're able to scan in for incidents and we can see that if we do multiple incidents, it's gonna keep the basic information to speed up the process. We can also have someone log in for a training session. If they wanna do that, or you can log in and scan what we would call daily log attendance. So the daily log attendance is uses the daily log module where we can document uh, information about the specific activity uh, that someone is logging in for. There is also an option in FirePro to track law sign outs. So someone can sign in and it timestamps and someone can sign out. This particular department's just set up to do the sign ins. But once we've tracked the sign in, it's gonna create a timestamp uh, and information in the system about when this person signed in for the call. And what that means is that when we are going to do, say, our incident entry or the actual entry of our training record, uh, we have a new tool that we can use to document that stuff. So in the incidents module, under the red toolbox, there's an option called attendance distribution list. And this is going to allow us to see a list of everybody who signed in for activities. So in this case, I can see I've got a great deal of information uh, about sign-ins and we can see that we've got a bunch we've got incidents on engine 52 we've got our thursday night training and our daily log activity so say i was going in and logging my attendance at a particular incident report i, I might for example have all these people that were signing in for an incident on the night of the 15th uh, what we would do there is we would find the incident that we wanted to sign in for um, 
in this case, that doesn't particularly matter, but we might as well do the same incident. Um, so we can sign in for, we go to the personnel tab here, and we can just drag all of our people from the attendance distribution list straight into the incident. Um, and now I have all their timestamps, uh, when they showed up, the apparatus they were on, and if I scroll over, it actually shows me the exact time and date that that person signed in for the call. So there's an electronic timestamp uh, which tracks exactly when that person signed in. If you're ever needing to check anything like that, you can go back and see uh, the sign in on them. So it's going to bring them over, attached already to the unit that they logged when they when they put it in, whether they were on scene or not. All that information's dropped in automatically, and all those names have come off the scanned personnel log. So it indicates that the, these people have been attached. They, they signed in and then they were attached to the record uh, where they, things occurred. It's also possible in here to do the same thing with the training module. So if I have a training session uh, where I wanna log some attendees, I'll pop that session in, um, put my basic info in there, uh, say this was two hours. Uh, once I save it, I can go to my details section. I can then just grab a person from my training, drop them into the personnel in attendance, and it's going to keep track of basic information on attendance. And similarly, I have my scanned in information here as well. So it's going to keep track of exactly who was there and, and uh, who signed in and when they signed in. I can also do that same process with the daily log. If I have a daily log activity that I want to track, that's a defect, not a daily log activity. Uh, so I can say, all right, here is what we were doing as a public event. And this one was a, an open house. And I want to grab my attendees, just grab my personnel off here, drag them straight into the session. And it's going to keep track of uh, their basic time. This is even a little more, uh, the daily log is even a little more detailed in the sense that it will actually pre-populate the start and end times uh, from the scanned times that you put in. So it'll potentially bring in uh, even more information to those daily log activities. So this is going to allow you, oh, sorry, Sean, let's, no. Um, this is going to allow you to relatively quickly have people scan in um, and log basic information about uh, when they showed up. Um, you can also do things from this scan personnel record, like if you've identified that these, these don't matter, we entered them manually, you can go ahead and delete scanned in entries to keep this list cleaner. Uh, it's also possible to uh, if someone signed in accidentally for a training, but it was actually a daily log, you can actually go ahead and, and even just pop them into a daily log event. It'll say that it's not for the module, but if you do go ahead and use the scan, it will still track the very basic information that the person scanned in. So it's possible to use those even if they've initially been scanned incorrectly for whatever reason. You just, it's going to be a little, a little less detailed potentially. Um, so those are the, the current tools that we have for the, the barcode integration. Um, if there's a fair bit there, but we can certainly, uh, I can throw the floor open to questions if people have some specific questions uh, about how to set up different elements of this or uh, what that looks like. It is important to note that in order to use any of the barcode options at all. You do need to make sure that under the individual person's password in the other tab that the attendance and inventory service scanning um, permissions are turned on. So this is something that you would determine which user profiles you want to have access to this. Likewise, the attendance distribution list where you're actually taking attendance scanning logs and assigning them to records, uh, that is also a permission you would need to give someone if you wanted someone to be responsible for that. It's not something that everybody gets automatically. Uh, so yeah, questions, you put them in chat, you can unmute yourself and, and ask.
Okay, well, if people are thinking about questions, um, one of the things that I uh, actually want to show you is a really quick way of setting the system up so that it will automatically pop open the barcode scanner tools for you. Um, so what you can do in that context is if you want to have a login that is just used for barcode scanning that lots of people know makes it a lot more convenient in the setup user options passwords you can create uh, a specific user profile uh, and just give a, a known password to that. Uh, and you don't need to attach that uh, profile to have view permissions on any of the modules. You would just give it uh, attendance scanning permissions. Um, it, you could also give it inventory service scanning permissions. You could create separate permissions for each uh, or separate profiles for each permission set, depending on how you want to do that. But once you've got that attendance scanning option set up, you can log in as the attendance scanner. And once you do that, under that sign in, in the file menu under preferences, you can set it up so that the attendance scanner for that user profile will pop up automatically as soon as you log in. So that's under the startup. Uh, so that would allow you to, as soon as you log in with the sign up or the sign in profile, pops you straight in there. Uh, so what we get a lot of the time is just set up that user profile um, and that's the one that can log in. Everybody knows the password. So it's uh, simple to, to log it in if for some reason it's been shut down and it kind of automates that whole process of feeding people into the sign in. Um, and this thing can be kept running for as long as you want. Uh, and all that information will start to accumulate in the attendance distribution list. So you can use it to document attendance for incidents, for training, stuff like that. Okay. So uh, yeah, everyone's just to remind you, everyone's on mute just to keep the background noise down. But if you'd like to unmute, ask any questions, put any questions in the chat, now is the time. 